I never imagined the day would come when Americans would be openly censored, and more importantly, that so many Americans would refuse to fight back. But I think that perhaps that there are, well, that there may be a silent majority who is willing to fight back. You know, the Constitution says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The First Amendment has long been upheld by the courts and employers and businesses have been held liable for violating this foundational amendment to our Constitution. But now we see that people across our land are being censored for being white and privileged, or for questioning, questioning their government, or simply for refusing to take a medication, or unwilling to conform to ideals that contradict their personal beliefs. But who do we trust? The government? A government that has lied for centuries to advance its agenda. Don't believe me? Ask the Native Americans who were forced from their land. Or the African Americans who were freed from slavery and promised equality, but had to fight for a century after being freed before they were able to share many of the freedoms that whites enjoyed. And now we face the second year of a pandemic that doesn't seem to end. Joe Rogan, who is one of the most influential podcasters and social media influencers, has been banned from Twitter, Apple, and Google Podcasts for simply discussing his treatment plan when diagnosed with COVID and for having Dr. Robert Malone, one of the creators of the mRNA technology, utilized on the jab. Silenced for asking questions and not bowing down to Lord Bill Gates, Sir Robert Cook, and Sleepy Joe Biden. Trust the science, they say. Those from Tuskegee trusted and were misled. Vietnam veterans were told for years that their illnesses and children born with handicaps were not as a result of Agent Orange. Our service members were forced to take a so-called safe anthrax vaccine that caused many to fall ill, and we are to trust science because the government says so. I am not so trusting. Recorded in Rocket City, USA. No bullshit. Just real talk. And now Deuce Conrad. The Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male, informally referred to as the Tuskegee Experiment or Tuskegee Syphilis Study, was a study conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And this study was on a group of nearly 400 African Americans with syphilis. The Public Health Service started the study in 1932 in collaboration with Tuskegee University, then known as the Tuskegee Institute, which is a historically black college in Alabama. The purpose of the study was to observe the effects of the disease when untreated, though by the end of the study, medical advancements meant it was entirely treatable. The men were not informed of the nature of the experiment, and to be quite honest, more than 100 died as a result. In the study, investigators enrolled a total of 600 impoverished African-American sharecroppers from Macon County, Alabama. Of these men, 399 had latent syphilis, but they had a control group of about 201 men who were not infected. Now, as an incentive for participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care, which was a sweet deal at the time. 
While the men were provided with both medical and mental care that they otherwise would not have received, they were deceived by the public health service who, to be quite honest, never informed them of their syphilis diagnoses, nor did they provide distinguished placebos in a, or ineffective methods and diagnostic procedures as treatment for bad blood. The men were initially told the experiment was only going to last six months, but it was extended to 40 years. 40 years. And after funding for treatment was lost, the study was continued without informing the men that they would never be treated. None of the infected men were treated with penicillin, despite the fact that by 1947, that particular antibiotic was widely available and had become the standard treatment for syphilis. The study continued under numerous public health service supervisors until 1972, when a leak to the press resulted in its termination on November 16th of that year. But by then, 28 patients had died directly from syphilis. 100 died from complications related to syphilis, and 40 of the patients' wives were infected with syphilis. And above all that, 19 children were born with congenital syphilis. The 40-year Tuskegee study was a major violation of ethical standards, and it has been cited as arguably the most infamous biomedical research study in U.S. history. Its revelation led to the 1979 Belmont Report and to the establishment of the Office for Human Research Protections, as well as federal laws and regulations requiring institutional review boards for the protection of human subjects and studies. It's one of the reasons that many vaccines and many medications now go through years of study before they're ever approved. It is, it, this whole revelation was important uh, because of the distrust, the distrust in medical science and the U.S. government amongst African Americans. And I could see why. On May 16, 1997, President Bill Clinton formally apologized on behalf of the United States to the victims of the study. He called it, quote-unquote, shameful and racist. And you know what? He was correct. He was absolutely correct. Why did these men so willingly uh, donate their bodies to medical research on the basis of a promise? Because the government said, it's safe. The government said, trust the science. And as a result, 100 plus men died. Died. As a result of trusting the science. I bet you have been to Walmart at some time in your life and probably shopped there. I bet you even probably get groceries there from time to time. Did you know that Walmart has grocery pickup? And in fact, I can save you $15 on your first order of $50 or more. For more information, go to www.deuceconradshow.com and s select promotions. There will be a link there where you can sign up as a new customer. And again, you'll save $15 on that first order of $50 or more. Acorns is the leading micro-investing app in the United States. It's easy to use. Mobile-first technology makes it simple for anyone to set aside and invest life spare money. Acorns allows customers to automatically invest in a low-cost, diversified portfolio of exchange-traded funds offered by some of the world's top asset managers, including Vanguard and BlackRock. Customers grow their wealth in one of five portfolios constructed with help from world-renowned Nobel Laureate economist Dr. Harry Markowitz. Acorn's smart portfolio algorithms automatically work in the background of life, helping users build wealth naturally, pennies at a time. From Acorns, mighty oaks do grow. Hey, I'm using Acorns, and I love how easy it is to save and invest for my future. Join me, and you'll get a free $5 investment. Go to www.deuceconradshow.com and select the promotions link. And from there, you can sign up directly with Acorns. 
So let me pose this question. If the government was willing to treat African Americans this way, surely they wouldn't treat others the same way. Or would they? Agent Orange. You've probably heard of it by now, but if you don't know what it is, it is a herbicide and defoliant chemical, one of the tactical use uh, rainbow herbicides. It's widely known for its use by the United States military as a part of its herbicidal warfare program, Operation Ranch Hand, during the, the Vietnam War, which lasted from 1961 to 1971. It is a mixture of equal parts of two herbicides, 2,4,5-T and 2,4-D. In addition to its, its damaging uh, environmental effects, traces of dioxin, mainly TCDD, the most toxin of its type, are found in the mixture, having caused major health problems for many individuals who were exposed and their offspring. Okay, The government of Vietnam says that up to 4 million people in Vietnam were exposed to the defoliant. And as many as 3 million people have suffered illnesses because of Agent Orange. Now, while the Red Cross of Vietnam estimates that up to 1 million people were disabled or have health problems as a result of exposure to Agent Orange. The United States government has described these figures as unreliable. And why would they do so? Because they're liable for it. Yet there has been documentation of leukemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and various kinds of cancers in exposed U.S. military veterans. An epidemiological study done by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention showed uh, that there was an increase in the rate of birth defects among children of military personnel as a result of Agent Orange. For years, Agent Orange was... Uh, suspected in these cases of cancer and, and many other illnesses. But every time these veterans would go to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, they would be told that uh, it was safe, that they, it wasn't the cause, and that their, their illness was not service-connected. It was a line of bullshit. It went even further in that the United States government created a rule for establishing service connection to that particular disability as a result of Agent Orange, and it said that basically you had to be the boots on the ground, uh, that you had to have served in a particular area of Vietnam. Like, you couldn't be on a boat or in an airplane, you had to be physically on the ground. How the hell do you think it got to Vietnam? It came on ships, it came on airplanes, and it took years and years worth of lawsuits and, and, and battles in courts to prove that the government was wrong in, in their assumption that you could not be exposed to Agent Orange without being physically on the ground in Vietnam. That's not to include the enormous environmental damage that it caused in country. You know, the use of Agent Orange in Vietnam resulted in numerous legal actions. As we talked about, the United Nations ratified uh, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 31-72 and the Environmental Modification Convention. Lawsuits filed on behalf of both U.S. and Vietnam's veterans sought compensations for damages. And when they were approved, it required back pay. It cost the United States government billions, billions of dollars. But surely, surely the government would have learned from its mistake, uh, especially in Tuskegee, right? And, and because they had told folks in Tuskegee that they should trust the science, even though it was discovered that science was wrong and that they had been, uh, and that they had, uh, 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 more or less harm these individuals, we should trust the government, right? Why should we trust the government? Because the government says trust the science. Hey, Deuce Conrad here. I just want to tell you about Ibotta. Ibotta is one of the greatest things I have ever laid my eyes on it's a it's a great tool for actually earning money and trust me i've tried all these surveys and everything that the internet seems to say that you're going to make money but nothing has made me money like ibotta in my first week of trying ibotta i earned approximately 40 bucks just shopping 
it's like coupon savings for people that don't like to clip coupons. Anyways, there is a link in the description of this podcast uh, for you to become a partner with me in Ibotta. And when you submit your first receipt, you'll earn 10 bucks. That simple, that easy, just by going and shopping at places that you're already shopping, such as Walmart, Kroger, Publix. And it's easy to cash out as well. You can get uh, gift cards to Amazon or have a direct payment made to you. Anyways, check the link down below. Use uh, the referral code KAXRFWJ and earn $10 on your first receipt submitted. For many Americans, we didn't have a clue what anthrax was until after 9 11. Now, uh, the mysterious white powder began showing up uh, in, in post office boxes, uh, in government buildings, in, in, in news agencies, and in prominent citizens throughout the country. Now, the the deadly powder became a uh, uh, a scary thought, especially afterthought uh, after uh, 9/11, because for one, uh, it could so be it could so easily be transmitted especially through the air, ventilation systems. And so there was a huge scare across the country and in the globe for that matter. But what is anthrax? It's a serious disease that can affect both animals and humans. It is caused by bacteria called Bacillus anthracis. People can get anthrax from contact with infected animals, wool, meat, or hides. Anthrax can be used as a biowarfare weapon and has been used by our enemies in the early days of the war on terror. How did the U.S military handled the crisis? Well, with none other than a vaccine. Now, like any medicine and like all vaccines, the anthrax vaccine can and did have adverse effects. There's only one anthrax vaccine available in the United States, and its brand name is Biothrax. But you may also see it referred to as anthrax vaccine absorbed, or AVA. AVA is produced using a strain of anthrax that is uh, avirulin, which means it's unlikely to cause disease. But the vaccine doesn't actually contain any bacterial cells. And in fact, the, the vaccine is given in, in two different forms based on pre-exposure and post-exposure to anthrax. Yet it's not available to the general public, but it is given to the military, lab workers, and others who may come in contact with it. You know, the Department of Defense began a mandatory anthrax vaccination program in, in 1998. The aim of the program was to protect troops against potential exposure to anthrax bacteria used as a biological weapon. Concerns developed in the military community regarding potential long-term health effects of the anthrax vaccine, particularly on Gulf War, vet Gulf War veterans. Now, according to the government, researchers have found no association between the anthrax vaccine and long-term illness. Of course not. Why would the government find any association between anthrax vaccine and long-term illness. I mean, for one, I mean, they promised uh, Native Americans of, of great land uh, where they would be able to prosper and gave them sand. They gave them scorching sand. They promised 600 men in Tuskegee that they would have free medical care for participating in a safe study Regarding syphilis, what happened? What happened? More than 100 died. They promised veterans, veterans, U.S. veterans that fought in one of the longest wars in American history, that Agent Orange was safe. They were safe. And they denied their medical care knowing, knowing that, the, that, that this agent had caused so much harm so much so many deaths and so much illness and sickness and not just for that generation of veterans but for their gener future generations their offspring now in 2006 the vaccine program was updated to make the anthrax vaccine voluntary for most groups in the military why well there's no definite answer, but it's probably in part to the fact that more and more cases of individuals in the military were becoming uh, prominently shown in the media. Uh, we were hearing of 
our military service people that were, were falling ill to this particular vaccine. It should be noted that it's still mandatory for some personnel. These groups include those that are involved in special missions or stationed in high-risk areas. But there are many that still dispute the government's findings. Now, according to a 2002 SIDRAP study, uh, the Pentagon's mandatory anthrax shots caused adverse reactions in most recipients and helped prompt many Air Force Reserve and Air National Guard members to transfer to other units or leave the military between 1998 and 2000. That was according to a survey by Congress's General Accounting Offices, known as the GAO. The survey indicated that 85% of troops who received an anthrax shot had an adverse reaction. Think about that. That's, the, that's Congress, their own General Accounting Office, in an official survey, indicated that 85% of troops who had received an anthrax shot had had an adverse reaction. That rate was far higher than the 30% claimed by the manufacturer in 2000 when the survey was conducted. In fact, 16% of the survey respondents had either left the military or changed their status, at least in part because of the vaccination program. Now, the program appears to have adversely affected the Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve in terms of retaining needed experienced personnel, states the report, which was released in uh, uh, late October of, of 2002. The GAO recommended that the Department of Defense set up an active surveillance program for vaccine reactions. Now, even that survey was directed at a random sample of 1,253 Guard and Reserve personnel chosen to represent all pilots and aircrew members, including vaccinated and unvaccinated personnel. Out of that survey, it drew a 67% uh, response rate, and that the percentage findings are said to be accurate within a plus or minus of five points or so. The survey showed that between September of 1998 and September of 2000, about 16% of the pilots and aircrew members of the Guard and Reserve had, one, either transferred to another unit, primarily to non-flying positions, to avoid or delay receiving the anthrax shots, two, they moved to inactive status, or three, they left the military altogether. Additionally, an estimated 1 in 5, or 18% of those still participating in or assigned to a unit in the year 2000, uh, had not already changed their status and it indicated their willingness to leave in the near future. Both groups, both groups, those who had already left and those indicating their intention to leave, ranked a VIP or anthrax vaccine immunization program as a key factor in their decision to leave or change their, particip change their participation. Even more disturbing, from the survey results, the GAO estimated 37% of air crew personnel had received at least one anthrax shot of the six-dose regimen by September of 2000. 85% of the vaccine uh, recipients reported an adverse effect, a reaction, and each shot triggered an average of four or more reactions. Almost a fifth of the reactions were classified as systemic, and a fifth of these lasted more than a week. And at the time of the survey, the vaccine product insert listed the rate of adverse reactions at about 30% and a rate of systemic reactions at 0.2%, the report says. But should we trust the government? The government says yes, because you should trust what? The science. At Robin Hood, we think investing is better with friends. So for everyone you invite to join, you'll both earn a reward of stock. As soon as your friend signs up and links their bank account, we'll credit each of your accounts with a reward stock. Now keep in mind, you can receive up to $500 in reward stocks each calendar year. So feel free to spread the word. Go to www.deuceconradshow.com and select the promotions link. And from there, you can sign up directly with Robin Hood today. Okay, so we're going to fast forward to 2020. And a new vaccine has been developed to battle the COVID pandemic. It's an election year. And Democrats say they don't trust it because it was developed under a Republican's administration. 
In fact, now sitting Vice President Kamala Harris said that she didn't trust any vaccine that would be developed by Trump. Fast forward to 2021, the Democrats, including Vice President Harris, the same ones who rebuked the same vaccine before winning the election, now want to mandate the vaccine. Furthermore, they say, and when I say they, I mean the President of the United States, Joe Biden, says it's our patriotic duty to get vaccinated. They say trust science. They, these, <laughs> this is the same government that said trust science to the 600 men in Tuskegee. This is the same government that said to the Vietnam veterans who were denied VA benefits because they, as a government, said Agent Orange was safe. Trust the science. The same was said to those servicemen and women who took the anthrax vaccine. Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Trust the science. Do we have a right to be suspicious? Absolutely. Look here. At the end of the day, it's none of your damn business whether or not I'm vaccinated. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's none of my damn business if you're vaccinated. We have become so polarized in this country that we can't have a civil discussion about vaccines because you're either left or you're right, you're either a Democrat or you're Republican. You're either American or you're un-American. You're either patriotic or you're unpatriotic. I realize that by airing this podcast this evening, that there is a good chance, there is a good possibility that it will be flagged, that it will come off of some of uh, the prominent podcast platforms that are out there. Quite frankly, as Clark Gable said in Gone with the Wind, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. As of today, the Centers for Disease Control have now come out and they have finally admitted that exposure to COVID-19, having survived COVID-19, provides you with antibodies to protect you that are far better than the vaccine. There are going to be those that are going to say, well, it's not peer-reviewed. Or there are going to be those that are going to say that it's just going to increase your chances of survival. Get over yourselves. None of us really know what the hell's going on with this pandemic. This is a virus unlike any virus that we've ever seen. I can't trust a vaccine that was rushed out in a matter of months. A vaccine that's now up to its fourth booster shot, I think. Uh, A vaccine where we are seeing individuals, especially young men, developing long-lasting effects such as myocarditis. And we want to risk our children because the government says trust the science? Hell no. I don't trust the science. There's a term that is widely used right now, and the term is called misinformation. The White House has admitted in the past few days that they have been flagging social media posts on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and other social media outlets as COVID misinformation. When the White House, the People's House, The position of President of the United States, not dictator, not king, not emperor, president, elected by the people, for the people, decides when, where, and how an American citizen's First Amendment rights shall be exercised. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have become a nation that is more concerned with titles, more concerned with 
uh, equality beyond equality. It's not equality anymore. It's inequality. It's it's only equality when uh, it's something that you agree with. But if you don't agree with it, it's inequality. Look here. We all were kids at one point. I'm a big old boy. I like ice cream. Can't have it now, but I like ice cream. I like Neapolitan because you get a little bit of taste of everything. There were some kids that just like strawberry. There's some kids that like Rocky Road. I can't stand Rocky Road. But you know what? We all agreed to disagree, and we all got a slice of whatever it was that we liked. That's how America is supposed to be. We're supposed to be a melting pot. A melting pot pot. Right now, we are an overboiling pot of I don't know what the hell we are. But it's scary. It's scary. Look here. You may not agree with Joe Rogan, and that's fine. Guess what? You don't have to listen to him. You may not agree with Dr. Uh, Tony Fauci. Guess what? Don't listen to him. You may not like Donald Trump. Don't vote for him. You may not like uh, Joe Biden. Don't vote for him. The foundation of our country was developed upon the premise of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The ability to have freedom to choose. And when we have a tyrannical government that says otherwise, it shreds away the very fibers of that Constitution which has made this republic, this republic for which it stands. Until next time, I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the Deuce Conrad Show on Spotify Podcast. In case you didn't know, you can also hear this podcast on Google Podcast and Apple Podcast and most podcast platforms across the web. For more information about tonight's show, you can also visit www.deuceconradshow.com. Visit show notes for more details.